Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, the uh, faculty session here with the Faculty of Education uh, and Social Work. I'm uh, just turning on my presentation here. Uh, in the meantime, can you please uh, go to the chat box and uh, leave the program that uh, you are registered in? Uh, my name is uh, Thomas Johansson, and I am with uh, TRU World here at Thompson Rivers University. I'll be your host today for the faculty uh, session. So first of all, a big thank you to everybody who has, uh, who has called in here. Uh, we have a, a, a great number of participants, and thank you to uh, the faculty who is here. We, today we have five uh, faculty panelist uh, members here, so we're very happy to have that kind of support from our faculty. Uh, I know it's a trying time for everybody, so it's great to be able to uh, connect with you guys and let you know what uh, education at Thompson Rivers University is gonna look like this coming September. Uh, we're gonna move along here and introduce our faculty, uh, and we have a number of preset questions that we get a lot, which we will work our way through after we have talked to faculty a little bit. And then we will open up the floor to anybody who has a question, which you can leave in the uh, chat box um, as well. This is uh, not a forum uh, for talking about uh, visa-related questions, application-related questions. We are here to talk to our uh, faculty about teaching and academics, so please uh, leave those questions uh, to uh, another time. Uh, if you do have questions related to your application and you're an undergraduate student, please write I apply at tiu.ca. That was I apply at tiu.ca. For master students, that would be I grad at tiu.ca. I grad at tiu.ca. For any other question, uh, please get in touch with welcome at tiu.ca for any other uh, inquiries that are not related to your application. Um, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce uh, the faculty that is with us today. We have, um, let me just get this moved up. The Dean of uh, Education, um, Arini, will be here. Uh, Sarah Ladd will be here. She's the coordinator for the graduate programs. We have Samantha Priosi, uh, who's a graduate program advisor, Dr. Manu Sharma, assistant professor, and Dr. Joe Dobson, senior lecturer. So uh, I will let our panelists introduce themselves. Uh, Dr. Irini. Thank you so much, Thomas. Um, Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Arini. I am the Dean of the Faculty of Education and Social Work. It's my privilege and my, I'm very proud to be here today. I know that many of you are joining us from after midnight. So I just um, salute you for your commitment to your journey ahead as um, students, uh, in, uh, particularly in our graduate program. I see so many are coming into the MED and into the GCES as well. Thank you for your time. I'm going to acknowledge the territory um, on which we're meeting today. This is a traditional practice that we do here in Canada and, um, <coughs> excuse me, here uh, within um, British Columbia as it's now called and it's our way of showing respect to those who have come before us so we call that the acknowledgement of territory and it goes like this we are gathered here today uh, um, uh, it, for those of us who are within Kamloops in the interior of what is now called British Columbia and we recognize that there were people who came before us like all of us, we have ancestors who came before us. And the first people who came before us here are the Shkwetm from this nation that was here um, in early, early days. 
And so Thompson Rivers University is located on the unceded territory of the Shukwitan people. And that means that we, in doing our teaching, research, and service through the university, are now adding to this record of thousands of years of teaching, research, and service. And so we give acknowledgement, like we do for all of those who've come before us all around the world, to say thank you. Thank you for the chance to be here. And that's called the acknowledgement to territory. And one of the ways that we round it off is that we say hello in the language of this nation. And I'll say that to you as well. Wyatt Wigwaitet, my respectful greetings to you all. So we're very excited. Um, there's a great team here from the Faculty of Education and Social Work looking forward to meeting you and talking with you today. Uh, we're very much looking forward to you coming to um, be part of the, the, this learning community in fall 2020 semester. It's going to be a great journey. Uh, I, I myself, I'm thinking really deeply ab about the journey and perhaps some of the, the things that you're thinking through, the, the worries that you might have, the excitements that you ha might have. Because you may be able to tell that from my own voice, I, I have been an international student who has come to Canada. Uh, I made a decision like you have made to come here and to be part of them, part of the courses um, and the learning here. And I just want to reassure you that this is a very good decision that you have made. Um, I, I came here, I learned, I graduated with my, my PhD. Um, it has been a life career making, exciting uh, journey that's been made possible by that decision. We at the Faculty of Education and Social Work, we want this for you as well. So there will be alternate modes of delivery, um, which will be both awesome and different. And they will set you up to gain skills beyond the MED program and the education. Uh, They'll set you up to be a leader. Um, and I'm hoping that you can still hear me. Um, we are, as I say, committed to your, um, to your success. We're committed to making learning accessible to you anywhere in the world and we're committed to providing support for you to achieve your goals uh, in academic work. So let's get together, let's keep talking like we're beginning today, and let's make this a true success for you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Irini. Uh, Sarah, would you like to uh, share your thoughts with the students and introduce yourself? Of course. Thank you for the introduction. It's hard to follow Irini when she says so many beautiful things. Um, but I, I want to start by acknowledging that I'm actually a staff member, um, although maybe Irene, I've been promoted to faculty, so maybe a raise is in the order, and, and Samantha too. <laughs> um, I am excited to be here today to talk to all of you, actually in a different role. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to see if I can get this up on the screen. That's me and my dad from when I graduated last June from the MED program. And I had a wonderful experience in this degree, and I hope that you all um, are hoping to do that. And I hope you do decide to join. Um, and if you have questions about what my experience as a student was like, I'm happy to help answer those today. Thank you. Uh, Sam? Hi, everyone. So I am your program advisor. Um, I will be here to help you with course selection, registration, and any questions, um, I've been at TRU for quite some time now, so I know my way around. Um, if you have troubles with anything else, um, I'm here to answer, yeah, all your questions. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Manu? Hi, everyone. My name is Manu Sharma. I um, feel very privileged and honored to be able to be working in the Masters of Education program. I am excited to meet you. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed my time teaching a variety of classes in the MED program, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions today, and I look forward to uh, connecting with you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joe? Well, good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm really excited to have this opportunity to, to share with you all this morning. Um, I've been at uh, TRU now for almost 20 years, and it's really an amazing place, as you've already heard from Irene and Sarah and others, 
Um, it's, it's an amazing community of scholars and students. And so um, I felt very privileged to have worked here so long and uh, to work to, and taught with such uh, amazing students. And I'm excited to, to meet so many of you. Uh, I've recently started as the GCS uh, coordinator as well. And I noticed that a number of you are GCS students. So I'm looking forward to meeting a number of you as, as well in the coming, um, coming months. Uh, and uh, I'm just excited to share with you all and welcome you into this uh, community of scholars and inquiry and uh, people at TRU. So welcome. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and before we move on to the Q&A section here, we have a quick video uh, that Joe was nice enough to put together for us. Well, hello everyone. My name is Joe Dobson and I'm gonna share a short video with you that will go over a few of the things you might experience as a student at TRU during these times of alternative delivery. So in the School of Education where I teach, um, instructors on campus use a tool called Moodle. Moodle is a learning management system. And uh, when you enroll in courses at TRU, you're automatically enrolled in courses in Moodle. So once you log into Moodle and you'll be given all those instructions, you'll reach your dashboard and you'll see a list of all of the courses that you're enrolled in. You'll click on the course that you're enrolled in and you'll find yourself in a course that might look like this. Courses will be organized in different ways. They could be organized chronologically by week, or they could be organized by topics such as this one. And once you get into it, um, you'll start to see there's lots of different resources for you to explore and use as part of your learning in whatever subject it is that you're taking at a particular semester. Here's an example of another course that I've more recently taught in educational technology in a classroom. So in this course, for example, the course is organized week by week. Um, when students log in, they can see general information, they can see announcements, and other tools will be used in the class. On the left-hand side, you'll notice there's a, a menu of things. You can see other students enrolled. You can check your grades. You can see resources. And there are activities. Activities can be things in Moodle or outside of Moodle. They can be things like a forum or a wiki or a blog or many other tools. Um, you'll be uploading your assignments on Moodle as well in many cases and getting feedback through it. Uh, and there'll be a lot of rich and interactive media um, for you to uh, use in these courses as well, images, videos, etc. You'll notice one tab there says big blue button. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. You've probably heard of Zoom or Skype. I'm assuming you probably have by this stage in your life. So those are web conferencing systems at TRU. We use something called Big Blue Button. Big Blue Button is built into Moodle. And as a web conferencing tool, it allows for real-time classes synchronously to take place. And so you'll see on the left-hand side, there are ways for things to be shared, such as notes. You'll see the people who are logged in at a particular time. In the middle, you'll see chat, which is the things such as questions, clarifications, interactions in a particular live class um, that occur. Um, in the middle of the screen, you'll find a PowerPoint, a PDF, an image, a video, any number of things which are uh, the instructor's discretion, which they feel is going to be most relevant for class learning in those live sessions. So here's an example of what the PowerPoint looked like. And of course, there's a webcam there, and many instructors will share the webcam to give a much more humanizing experience for the whole thing for you to make it much more personal. And then uh, you notice there's a start recording button there up at the top. Many of, the, many of these sessions will be recorded for students to access afterwards as well. So that's an example of what these courses might look like once you log in. And again, so there'll be things such as course information, notes from the reader, from the instructor, pardon me, videos, um, activities, things of that nature. Some of the things outside of Moodle you might experience could be things such as, for example, a forum. So this is a forum that's on a blog. So instead of being a forum in Moodle, it's a place where the students share their thoughts and comment to each other on an open blog. And a lot of them love this in this case because they can share this with their peers, colleagues, family, and others and say, look what I've done. The great learning I've done, it becomes part of a portfolio for them in the future as well. So they carry it with them. Another thing that you might find yourself doing in some courses is building a collaborative wiki. So wikis are powerful tools where you collaboratively create content and discuss and put information up um, in rich and diverse ways on, tool, on topics that are of relevance uh, at a particular time. 
And so here's an example of one that was created by students in one of my classes. Again, it's on the open web, which is why I'm showing it to you. You might also find yourself using a tool such as an interactive whiteboard or space for students to share and discuss ideas. So here's something that I've used in one of my classes called Padlet, and students can log on to this anonymously. I should say not log on. They can use it anonymously and post their thoughts on whatever the topic is in lots of rich ways, um, including both media or text. And so these are just some of the examples of ways in which you might find yourself experiencing education at TRU in a time of alternative delivery. And I hope this is something you find of use in uh, thinking ahead for your study at TRU in the future. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Joe. That was uh, really uh, helpful. And I think uh, that is uh, something that we're going to have a, get a lot of questions about. So it's great to, uh, to do that uh, up front. Just going to fire up my screen again here. Sorry, oh, there we go. So now we're gonna move on to the Q&A section. Um, we have been receiving lots of questions from students. So first we'll take uh, some of the most popular ones here. We have about seven lined up and then we'll start taking questions uh, from the chat box. First one here, uh, can you please clarify which courses will be delivered uh, virtually or face-to-face -face or blended? And I would like to, if Joe can jump in on that question. So uh, thanks uh, for the question. Uh, the, the courses this fall that are regular campus courses that uh, in a normal circumstance we delivered on campus, we're doing all those through alternative delivery right now, which means that they're, they're accessible all through the internet, through Moodle and other tools as you just saw. And so um, they're delivered in, in a blended format um, in a sense that they'll have some times where there's synchronous sessions, like you saw in that video previously, like a big blue button where you interact in real time. And then there's some things that you do outside of that kind of synchronous session in kind of any time learning, as I like to describe it. Um, so you could be at uh, nine in the morning or three in the morning, whatever your, um, your schedule kind of is and your kind of uh, lifestyle is. But uh, yeah, they'll all be delivered virtually coming this fall uh, through that blended format. So there's no programs within the School of uh, Education and Social Work that the student will have to be on campus uh, to take part in. Uh, other faculties uh, would have somewhere there needs to be face-to-face, -face, uh, fine arts, for example, where it's very studio heavy, but there's nothing within uh, your faculty. Is that correct? That's correct. Fantastic. Um, a next question here, uh, why should I study virtually? Uh, what are the advantages of virtual learning? Uh, and then there's a second part to the question, what will the online delivery look like? And can you describe what the virtual learning experience is? So uh, Manu, do you wanna take uh, the first uh, part of this question? Manu, sorry, uh, you have, can you unmute yourself please? Okay. Can you hear Perfect. me now? Perfect. Okay. okay. So um, part of uh, the reasons why you should continue to study virtually is so that you can continue on your career path that you have chosen and um, continue to go forward with your plans and um, not be held back by the situation. And, and another great reason is so that you develop a, a strong set of tools in terms of learning about technology. So you will develop uh, skills and technology that you might not have had before that will help you um, develop more creative ways of uh, communicating and learning and new insights that um, maybe you will end up really enjoying and um, uh, sharing your thoughts in this new format um, might uh, provide you with um, a better way to connect with people and uh, th that would um, allow you to go forward with your career choices and it will allow you to develop your technological skills and it will, um, 
it will add this component to um, uh, add this component of flexibility and creativity. Okay, so I, I guess there's I, I guess there's I guess there's Sorry, it seems we're, we're getting quite the quite the echo. Okay. Is everything okay? Yes. Okay. So just to recap in case you missed a little bit of it, uh it allows you to it allows you to allow you to allow you to Oh, here we go. Okay. So it allows you to go uh, Go forward with your career development plan, plan, okay. plan. and um, you will be very well supported and we are all in this together. So don't feel that you would be isolated in any shape, way or form. Two, it will help you sharpen your technological knowledge and skills and you will be learning in a, in a community um, format which supports and scaffolds your learning of those skills. So again, you won't be alone and we'll do it together. And three, it allows you to learn how to creatively um, um, learn in that environment, in a new setting. So it's a new challenge and um, it's something that you can embrace. And so I think it would be great for you to continue with your studies. And I think there's many advantages of learning um, online as well. Um, and I'm excited for you to take on this challenge and I think it will work in your best interest. So on the uh, part two of the question, I'm going to let my colleague Joe jump in. To Thank ask. you. That that was great. And I, uh, Joe, you've already uh, you've already touched on this a bit. Uh, is there any what else is going on outside of uh, Moodle? Uh, is there office hours, for example, that student can uh, can attend? Uh, what what would happen kind of with learning resources now that you can't go to a library and 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 so on? Is there, what what's in place? You can't visit a bookstore and so on. Uh, that's a great question. Yeah. So everyone saw the, the video already about the kind of tools that we used. The, the word that comes to mind for me when I think about alternative delivery format, both for instructors and for, for students is flexible. Um, you know, that in a regular class schedule, um, you have to be in the classroom at say nine in the morning and your class will go for a period of time. There's a very set schedule online alternative delivery is quite different. You have, you'll probably have in most classes some regular times when you meet um, in live sessions. Live session, live session, live session. Um, I would side of that in, in a more flexible format um, for you to do it as, as your schedule permits. And, and that also benefits many students because it allows them to, to kind of live the rest of their lives in other ways, if it's work or family in other ways. So the flexible learning actually works for a lot of people. Um, to get through their, their study and their goals in a way that they want at the same time as, um, you know, kind of having other aspects of their life. Um, in terms of what you asked uh, about other resources, for example, the library, bookstore, et cetera, TRU has really um, kind of uh, incredibly quickly shifted everything to online. Um, so that's everything from the library to the bookstore, to counseling and accessibility services. All of those services you'd normally be able to on a campus when you're on, on campus in person, just walk down and, and, and go and do. You can do the exact same thing in the virtual space now. So the resources are identical, they're just accessed differently. And in some ways it's better because it's even more flexible. Um, and so I, I don't know if that uh, gives everyone enough information, but I'd be happy to add more if there are further questions about that in the future. Sorry about that. Uh, no, that was great, Joe. Unless there's somebody else who would like to, to add to that, uh, I'm gonna jump uh, to the next question here. Oh, sorry, yes. Go ahead, Dr. I Sharma. Say, um, in terms of office hours, um, when teaching in this alternative mode, I have uh, met students according to, we've done email exchanges, we've also had meetings virtually. Um, and so that would be also something that would be there to support the students. So it would, it's not that you would not be able to connect directly with your professor. You would, you just have to make an arrangement to set up a time that works for both of you. Okay, 
So Thank I just you. put that out there so that there will be that communication. Thank you. That's terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, next question here, uh, and I know we've touched upon it uh, a little bit, and Dr. Arini, you mentioned that uh, it's pretty late for a lot of uh, our participants, uh, but who can uh, speak a little bit about what is the difference between synchronized and asynchronized delivery, and uh, what if I miss the live lecture uh, portion? So I, I will take a, a go at this question. So synchronized is when everybody's online at the same time and everybody has conversations uh, in real time together. Asynchronized is when uh, the videos are videos and the rest of the course material is made available to you at any given time as Joe, my colleague, was saying that, um, you know, it'd be flexible and let's say, depending on when you're available to do what you need to do, the course is already developed in Moodle and it's there for you to access. In regards to if you miss a, a live lecture in a blended setting for a course, you, um, you would have an opportunity probably to download the recorded lecture that also was uh, shown in Joe's video. So if there ever was a live synchronous um, meeting and you could not attend, you would download the recorded version. And I would also encourage you to make connections with other fellow colleagues in your course to connect with them in case you had follow up questions and, and they were there. And once again, the professor is also available, but it would be just like a, a regular class in, in the sense that you would try to um, capture all the content that you missed and uh, follow up with anything that you would need to do. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. Um, so when it comes to, uh, to students studying abroad, can you guys talk maybe a little bit about what are the technical specifications that you're looking for, internet speed, computer, and are we able to help out in any way if, if students are struggling technically? I don't know, uh, Joe, is that something you uh, have experience with? Sure. Uh, is my mic unmuted? I hope it is. It's um, good. Yeah, so in terms of connectivity, I mean, if everyone's managed to get onto this Zoom meeting today, you probably have adequate internet access and speed before doing the kind of study uh, and using the tools we have at TRU. And so uh, in regard to the supports that we have, I mean, technical issues do arise sometimes, as we all know. Um, and there's, there's an incredibly uh, responsive IT department, uh, informational technology department at TRU as well as um, educational technology unit. And so they, they respond incredibly quickly to issues that arise for connectivity, login, and things like that. Um, so I'm actually amazed at um, some of the supports that are available. Uh, Fantastic. Thank you, Joe. Um, the next one we have here is, uh, how do I register for my courses? Um, and what is the course schedule like? Okay, so I will answer that question. Um, I have sent all of you a welcome package that has all the course information and registration um, instructions. If you have not received that, please do email me. I put my email in the chat there and I can send you it. Um, you register in your classes through an online platform called MyTRU. Um, and if you need help with that, I'm there to help you, um, as well as our international registration department. Um, but most of the course information should all be in that welcome package. Um, exactly what courses you'll take, how many, um, yeah. Terrific. Uh, thank you very much. Next question, question number five here. Uh, what kind of support is the faculty offering for students studying uh, virtually? So we've already touched upon this a bit, but uh, Joe? Uh, again, I, I don't know if I have much else to add uh, other than, you know, I think that the support comes from the support staff units such as informational technology and our educational technology unit, um, things such as the library, um, office hours and things like that. One other thing that I think is really notable for those of you who are interested in the graduate programs and, and planning to do graduate programs at TRU um, is that we have uh, what's called the Graduate Student Success Center. We started that about two years ago, um, partly as we saw that the incredible demand uh, uh, for our programs at TRU uh, grew. 
that we recognized that there was a need for additional students. And so the Student Support Center is actually staffed by other students who are senior students who have uh, already completed most of the, the key uh, uh, required courses in the Masters of Education, for example, such as research methodology, and they've been exceptional students. And so then they get hired to serve as graduate uh, teaching assistants. It's a kind of a mentoring, tutoring school. So what they do is they meet on a one-on-one -on -one basis with students who might want help. It might be brainstorming an idea. It might be uh, identifying resources. It might be working on a thesis statement or the essay organization of their, of their writing or their language. And so they get this kind of peer feedback that's confidential and from someone who's had the same experience as them as a student. Um, and so they get really good advice on how to be successful in their assignments and things like that. And it's really made a, a really great impact on our student success. Uh, accompanying the kind of appointments that the students get through the Success Center are also um, a number of events. And so through that center, we have uh, events every week or two. They can be workshops on topics of relevance. So for example, essay organization or developing a thesis statement, or it may be things uh, of a more uh, kind of generic or general uh, interest to students. For example, this Friday, we have a workshop on, on uh, finding employment uh, during the COVID-19 crisis uh, for Masters of Education students. So people to plan ahead on the kind of employment opportunities they would have after graduation and that's a, so a guest speaker we have coming in. So those are some of the things we do to kind of help support students as well as provide resources and opportunities for them to interact with others, uh, fellow students and build community and, and learn uh, from others as well. Thank you very much, that, that's terrific. Uh, Sarah, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I was raising my hand earlier because I wanted to make sure Joe mentioned the Graduate Student Success Center. Um, we have a, a three TAs right now and, and we'll have a new group in the fall. And um, they're absolutely just amazing students. They care so much. Um, they are doing virtual appointments now and um, the workshops that are offered are so much fun to listen to and, and useful and timely. Um, and don't worry, the career one will be offered in the fall again, too. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll jump on to question number six here. Uh, how will I be evaluated? How do I take the midterm uh, and final exams? That's a question we, we hear a lot. Okay. So I'm happy to begin. In my courses, there are no midterms and there are no final exams, and that is the common practice within the Faculty of Education. We, um, we have a variety of alternative formats for assessment. So there are presentations and there are papers and there are group assignments and, and things like that um, that happen instead of um, midterms and final exams. It's really um, a, a more creative approach to assessment to make sure everybody is able to put their strengths forward in how they are being assessed. Perfect. And, and so how is that working out with, uh, with these more creative ty types of examinations and going fully uh, virtually? Has, uh, has things have to been changed up a little bit or is it basically the same kind of? Good question. So um, in one of my uh, courses that I teach for um, their final assignment, there was a um, uh, a presentation that they had to do and we had uh, a bit of a learning curve for some students to learn how to record a video and upload it into Moodle and um, some people chose to do a live video recording of themselves talking about the topic um, in different settings in their home or maybe outside um, and some people decided to do their uh, video presentation with a PowerPoint and just a, a, um, a voiceover so that they were just speaking but not visible on, um, on the presentation. As I understand, everyone has different levels of comfort doing that. Um, and then some, some people used um, just more of a podcast style. And so they had music and their voice incorporated and we talked about how to develop uh, these types of assignments and um, with help with um, support students were able to submit their final assignments in, in a creative approach that met their uh, skill set. 
But there's actually maybe more uh, different ways of presenting your final uh, your final work than there would have been if it had been classroom based. Um, well, I actually offer similar things in in the classroom. So I always like to encourage my students to to feel comfortable and own their work in their presentation in a manner that demonstrates their strengths and talents. And so I always provide the option of if you would like to pre-record it and play it for the class in real class time, pre-COVID, um, we would have that. Or if you wanted to um, do it in, in person live, you can do that. So these options of alternative ways of doing the assignment were present prior as well. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, last question here, and then we'll go to the questions in the chat box. Uh, why should I plan to enroll in fall uh, 2020 instead of uh, winter 2021? Joe, will you jump in on that one? Uh, sure, happily. Uh, so why should you enroll in fall 2020 as opposed to the winter or fall 2021? Uh, I think the biggest reason, it's an individual choice, of course. Everyone has their own goals and ambition and, and thoughts about what works for them. But I think for most people, I mean, you know, most of us want to get on with our life and, uh, you know, reach our goals sooner than later. And you know, starting sooner, it gets you closer to that finish line to whatever your career and other goals are. And I think that's the biggest reason. Uh, and accompanying that, um, as you've seen and heard, the kinds of experiences you have in an online alternative delivery, while they are different from that of a face-to-face -face campus um, environment, of course, or experience, um, they're equally rich and powerful in the learning is um, just the same. It's the same content, just delivered differently. Um, you have instructors such as uh, Manu and others who put the same time and care and attention into online delivery as they would have face-to-face -face and make the same connections with students. Um, and the, I think the experience is, while different, it's just as rich and powerful and, again, gets you to your goals sooner than later. Thank you uh, very much. So uh, now we will uh, open it up for uh, general questions. I can see we already got quite a few here. Uh, first one here would be from Kamal Deep. Uh, would GCES students be getting any uh, certificate after the completion of their course? I don't know if that, uh, anybody can jump in on that one? I can uh, take that one, okay. yes. It is, a, it is a program, and all programs, when completed, you'll receive a certificate for. So it'll be the same thing. If, it's, if you only do GCS, then you'll have that graduate certificate in education when you graduate. If you then continue on to the MET, you'll actually have both. So not to worry on that one. Great. Another question from uh, Kamal Deep was, uh, how many hours per week would be spent on virtual classes uh, or for one course, has, has that changed at all, you think, the time you spend on a course? Don't know if anybody has any insight there or, or has that kind of stayed? I could jump the in. Same? Mm -hmm. um, so um, at the moment I'm, I'm teaching a course and it's in compressed form um, in summer. So instead of being across 13 weeks, it's across um, six weeks and we are meeting well our class our scheduled class time is two classes of three hours on Mondays and Wednesdays and that's compressed now usually the course would be over a whole semester but what we try to do is to be um, helpful for students who want to be able to move ahead um, in uh, more quickly and to complete more more courses or to complete in spring and then in summer they can have a have a break as well so we try to be as um, flexible as possible for our students so the the hours um, usually it comes to about 35 to 40 hours per course um, and the really nice thing is that we have a, a, a TRU course schedule 
which is available anywhere in the world, anytime. And you can go on to that page and maybe Sam or Sarah could help us by popping the link into the chat box. And you can go on there and you can see what the course, what, what the hours are that are scheduled for your course. Now, what um, Joe and Manu have been indicating is that we've got this bonus now with the alternate modes that there'll be additional flexibility with that. So sometimes you'll meet um, as a whole class all together like we are now, which is synchronous. And sometimes you'll have independent work, which is asynchronous. Um, but those class times are set aside so that you can always count on on that being your your course time in my case um, the work that we're doing right now is kind of like office hours for our last two classes um, in the research methods course and so students are coming in and they're able to ask any questions that are particular to them getting ready for their research proposal which is the final assignment for for this course um, so there's structure and there's flexibility. Sounds like a, a, the best of both worlds, really. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's, that's, that's terrific, yes. Uh, it opens up uh, some opportunities, uh, uh, that's for sure. Um, let me see, I had a question here. Um, when it comes to uh, assignment, what is the maximum time limit given for a task to be completed? So. Is it possible to give any answer, any uh, solid answer on, on how long they have to complete a, a task? I can answer in part, and I'm sure Manu uh, has other things to add, but I think every assignment in, in course will be different. Um, some assignments are very small, and maybe there'll be something that you're doing within that week, a very short reflection, and some things are larger, and they could take, you know, you know a month or more. And so it's, it's really impossible to answer that with any kind of, uh, you know, this will be the way it is in this course or that, because it's, it's really different. I do know that most instructors are quite flexible in terms of things, knowing that people have their lives to live and circumstances to rise. Um, so in such cases, I just always suggest, you know, a conversation with the instructor. But uh, it's really impossible to answer from my perspective, you know, that each one will be way because there's such a variety of assignments and how they're weighted. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, sure. So I, um, I would say that also you can take um, comfort that most, most instructors will share um, an overview of all the assignments at the very beginning. So uh, you would have it in your syllabus, what assignments and how you're being graded. So you would have that overview at the very beginning. And um, due dates would probably be assigned, but there are, like Joe said, there would be flexibility, especially given the situation of what everybody's going through. So um, I, there, there's always space. My students have contacted me if they needed more time and I've granted many extensions on assignments. So um, it is something that's a conversation piece. And um, I do agree with Joe that each assignment is different in terms of how much time it would take. So, thanks. Can I ask a question? <laughs> I'm jumping sure, in. yes. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions here and I'm recognizing that we only have a little bit of time left. Um, is there a way, Thomas, that these questions can be captured? If anything doesn't get answered, then Sam and I could work on some answers and have an email ready by the end of this week, maybe? Would that be okay? Uh, sure, I believe uh, we are able to do that. Let me just uh, post a question to my colleague, Sarah. She's on the uh, technical uh, technical yes. end here. I'll get back to you. Sorry? Yes. Done. Terrific. All right. Uh, I saw one question come through here regarding whether if a student is unable to attend any of the synchronous classes, will it affect their uh, grades at all uh, if they're only able to do stuff uh, asynchronous? I, I can I can answer that question. Um, in my classes, no, that would not affect you. Um, you would you would be expected, like um, as mentioned earlier, if you were to miss a class in terms of the synchronous class, uh, there would be an expectation that you would watch the recording and that you would uh, complete the work that was due for that class. Um, but yeah, it it wouldn't count against your grade, but you would be expected to catch up on the missed material by watching the recording. 
Thank you very much. Uh, one additional question here is uh, for the Bachelor of Education. How will the B at a practicum look like in the coming fall 2020 or spring uh, winter uh, 2021? Uh, who would like that question? I can I can answer that. Um, we we've been very fortunate here in British Columbia to be at the leading edge of um, looking at practicum in new ways and expanded ways. And so in the past, we've tended to think that practicum always has to be in school, face to face. But now we realize that a lot of learning that school children is doing is online. And so we can be a teacher online and we can do our practicum online as well. And so our British Columbia Teachers, Teachers Council and Ministry of Education has agreed that up to 50% of practicum can be done virtually, can be done online. So while we wait for schools to open up in full um, at the moment, and we're all practicing and working really hard to look after everyone's health and well-being right now, we have options, which is just fantastic because school children are still going back to school, teachers are still training, and our in-service teachers are still teaching their classes. So the answer to your question is that um, there will be virtual practicum options um, and there, and once schools open up there will be on cam on campus in school options as well always practicing the the health and safety the social distancing that's needed um, so that's the good news is that um, we're able to move ahead um, we're not going to delay on having great teachers coming out and being graduates from TRU's Bachelor of Education and Masters of Education and all of the credentials that we know are so important for getting you moving ahead. Terrific, thank you Irini. Uh, that was a great a great update. Uh, one question that came through here was whether or not this will be recorded and uh, yes it will and we will be able to share it with you later. Uh, one question that is coming in a lot is uh, regarding the MET program and the different uh, options that the student have to finish in the program. I imagine thesis-based, course-based. Can anybody talk a little bit about that? Uh, um, it would be great if we could actually go through the details. I'm just looking at a question that someone's written to me privately on the chat, and it's very similar. It's um, asking basically if um, if you do the thesis option, is it going to make it longer for you than if you do the capstone or project options? And what's great for me is that it sounds like people have really looked closely at our website and Sarah Laird is, is looking after our, our website and would always be interested in feedback about how we can make that even clearer and more helpful for you. So you've identified there are three exit options. There's the capstone, there's the research project, and there's the thesis. Now, some people are thinking, oh, if I do the thesis, is it going to take me longer? Now, is there someone from our team who'd like to answer that question for us, please? We can tackle that. I actually gave a presentation last semester on all three exit options, um, and I chose the project option, which is the sort of the middle choice. Um, I think I saw a question about what's the fastest way, and I will be honest, the fastest way is the capstone. It's uh, one semester long at, um, and you do nine elective courses. So you do your 10 courses in total, including that capstone. Um, the project generally takes about two semesters and a thesis can take three or more semesters. So it is a bit longer um, and you're putting a quite a bit of, of work into that. Um, we do have, once you're in our program, that video available of the presentation I did on all of those. Uh, I also encourage you, and this is the most important part for this, talk to Sam about your exit option choices as you're deciding, once you've decided, partway through, partway through again, talk to Sam regularly and keep on track with your thesis, um, your project or your capstone exit option, and she will be there to help you. If you get partway through, let's say you decide you're gonna do thesis and then, oh my gosh, 
I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> I'm not actually, but you know, life happens. So I'm partway through my thesis and, and my life changes. Talk to your, talk to your program, talk to Sam, talk to your faculty, and we can fix that. We can get you down to a project or even a capstone if we need to. So don't stress out about it. Okay. It, I know exit options are a little scary sounding, <laughs> but we're here to support you through all of that process. But the most important thing is talk to your program advisor. Thank you very much. Um, there isn't a certain date that they need to declare their exit option by. I see that question. Or is it the, can it we be done? We don't have a specific date for that, Thomas. But if you are thinking about a thesis, you want to do that a little sooner in the program. So you can plan and get some help in finding a supervisor to, met, to look after you while you're doing that. Um, and so there is a course that we offer. It's, it's one of the core courses. You all have to take it. It's called Research Methods. And I will not lie, when I was in the program, I was scared to death of that course because it sounds so serious. <laughs> <laughs> and so I waited a couple of semesters to take it. And then I took it and I loved it. And it was so much fun. And the instructor was amazing. And I know Irene and one of our other faculty, Rula, are teaching that right now. And I can only imagine how much fun they're making that too. But that course really helps you figure out if a thesis is going to be right for you. And so in that course, I learned that a thesis was a bit too big for me, but a project might actually be perfect for my personal interests. So I would recommend that you take that course sooner in your degree, and that will help you decide which exit option to take. Perfect. I think that that answered that question uh, perfectly. Um, I don't have uh, that many more questions uh, coming through here. So um, I think we should start wrapping it up. We're getting close to the hour here. Uh, do you guys have any final uh, remarks that you would like to leave the students with before we, uh, we wrap it up? Well, I'd like to say thank you very much, everybody, for um, joining in and for all the excellent questions. I think what they show me is that people are really thinking this through in very practical, ambitious ways. Um, and we are so looking forward to um, seeing you in this learning community together. I hope a big message that you're getting from this is that we are really committed to your success and to your journey. We're committed to you having all the opportunities that do come from this um, education available at Thompson Rivers University and within this program. I am I'm very proud of being able to work alongside these colleagues. I'm very proud of the students that I'm, I'm learning and working alongside right now. And I, I really look forward to you being part of this wonderful community together. Thank you, True World, for making it possible for us to begin this conversation today. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arini. Uh, anybody else who would like a, a last comment here before we, uh, we wrap it up? I'll just say a couple of very brief words and that's, uh, you know, thanks to everyone for, for listening in um, and all the great sharing um, uh, from my uh, colleagues at TRU. Um, for those of you, you know, thinking uh, I'm planning to study at TRU for your graduate degree or other here, um, it's an exciting thing, you know, to, to study internationally and learn from different perspectives is one of the, the greatest things you'll do in your lives. And, uh, you know, we just kind of wish you all the best and we will find ways to support you and help you grow as an individual with your goals, um, whatever those may be. And so we look forward to having you in the class virtually in the fall and on campus in the future when things uh, open up that way. And uh, so thank you. Thanks, Joe. Um, that was great. And, and thank you to everybody from the, the Faculty of uh, Education and Social Works. A couple of notes here from me before we wrap it up. Uh, we might still have left some questions, but we will uh, follow up on those as soon as we can. Uh, any other question regarding applications and uh, other issues, please do get in touch with welcome at tiu.ca and we'll try to get back to you 
as quick as possible. Uh, over the summer here, we are going to be running some courses in how to succeed in online or virtual uh, learning. So that, uh, so please do keep an eye on the emails coming from uh, TAU. In general, there will be a lot of emails coming your way. So please do read all that content. There's some great stuff uh, going out. Uh, please do keep an eye on uh, their COVID-19 website. So that is uh, tau.ca uh, forward slash COVID-19 or just do a Google search TAU uh, COVID-19 and that is where you can find the most up-to-date uh, information when it comes to the COVID situation. Uh, and do keep an eye on all those emails. Uh, tomorrow, there will be a, uh, within the next couple of days, there will be a survey going out. We will be asking you a number of questions so we can be best prepared for you uh, when we start the semester in September. So please do take a couple of minutes to fill out that survey so we uh, know your intentions and how we can best support you uh, in September. So if there's uh, nothing else, I'd like to say thank you to uh, everybody uh, who attended and uh, see you guys in September. Thank you, everyone. My name is Anh Nguyen. I am the valedictorian for Faculty of Education and Social Work. I'm graduating from ESL program. So I'm from Vietnam in the central area of Vietnam and my city name is Da Nang. After I study one semester at International University, uh, I realized my dream is to study abroad and travel around in the world. I chose Canada. Canada is well known as offering international students the best education in the world. Kamloops is suitable with me. I would love to spend my student life learning in a peaceful environment and Kamloops is perfect with that. English play the most important role when you study abroad. Of course, I have to improve my, my English when I live here and I study. I spend my student life here. From my bachelor degree program, business administration, I want to learn from some of the professors and I want to hear and learn from their sharing their experience. The university is the place where people can learn and exchange the knowledge, all the knowledge in the world. After I finish my bachelor business administration degree, I would move to the master degree and after that I will apply to work as internship for three years. My family is running a business in Vietnam so I will go back to my country and take over my family business. The best part of TAU is the way TAU offer international students their support. When I have any problem with my internet or technology, I have IT services. And even when I do the register for any semester, I have my advisor. There is writing center, English center, and even somebody can talk to you to share your emotion. And I feel like I never feel alone at TRU. There's always somebody help me out and yeah, improve myself here. And I love TRU. Mm -hmm.